Hey y'all, Data Guy here. And today I got a video for you, another viewer request video actually, on how do you take data from a Mongo database and bring it into a MySQL database. Um, now what's interesting about this particular ask is because while Mongo uh, stores things in collections, it's pretty much unstructured JSON formatted data, uh, MySQL is a traditional database. You know, it uses SQL, uh, it's a uh, object relational database. Um, and so, it's a little tricky kind of because you'll have to do some data conversions. You can't just uh, copy directly from, you know, like you would from a SQL database to a SQL database, which is you maybe change the names of some variables or some types for that database's particular needs. But instead, you'll actually need to reformat the data. Um, and so what I'm going to show you today is a way to do that. Um, and I'll keep it very simple at first. Just, hey, how do we take data from a Mongo database? into a uh, MySQL database and I'll also show you, hey, if you want to uh, make it dynamic, if you want to be able to run it in parallel, um, some different alterations. But first I just wanted, I'm gonna start with the basic setup because there are a couple kinks. You have to use a specific version of MySQL. Um, otherwise it won't be found, especially if you're on later versions of, of Airflow. So I'm gonna be your guide all through that. Um, and without further ado, let's get into it. So the first thing we're gonna do is uh, actually just create a new directory. So we'll go to desktop, uh, data guy videos and then we're going to make directory mongo to mysql migration and then what we'll do is create a new airflow directory so cd into that um, mongo to sql and then we will type astra devinit and this will bring in our full local airflow directory which we can then uh, open in terminal start setting it up so what we'll do, if we go open that file we just created, um, and you'll notice I obviously tested this before uh, doing it live. So here, if I go into my data guy video repos, open MySQL, or Mongo to MySQL, and then we are in our requirements file. So within here, what you're gonna wanna do is open requirements, and then you're gonna need two package or two requirements. So if you're not using an astronomer CLI, just use uh, pip install to install this on your Airflow environment. But since I am using the Astro CLI, all I have to do is just add these to the local uh, requirements file, and then these will be installed when I boot up my Airflow environment. So here, sorry, not back to back. Um, and so you'll notice my, this, my SQL version I'm using is quite a few behind the latest release. Uh, and this is because this is the first version I found that actually would work and install properly. Um, I'm, on, I'm running Airflow 2.7.2, but if you try to use the latest version of MySQL, even though it looks like it was updated for the most recent version of Airflow, it just isn't found. Um, and I reverted a few versions back, still wasn't able to find it, um, and it just failed to build. So make sure you're using 4.0, um, or if I'm missing something here and there actually is a newer version that you can use um, and I'm just being silly, please also let me know because I was pretty confused by this and I would like to know what's happening because it just says it can't find it. Um, but for now, just make sure you have it at 4.0. Mongo can be the latest version 3.2.2. Uh, Mongo is a lot more stable. I think MySQL isn't as amazingly supported as it could be. Um, so then after we've gotten our providers in, all we need to do is create a new DAG. So Mongo MySQL migration, a lot of M's out here, dot .py, not dot .dag, as anyone who saw one of my previous videos knows, I made a silly. Um, and then what we're gonna do here is start building our DAG. So because we need to kind of alter the data as we're pulling it out. And because both these services rely on hooks instead of traditional operators, we're going to be using uh, the Airflow DAG, Airflow Task, but then also the Mongo hook and the MySQL hook. So what this means is we're gonna to have to wrap these in a Python function, um, and then just use the hooks to create connections into each of these environments to actually execute our query to pull data out of Mongo, and then also to execute insert statements to bring data into our MySQL database. Um, so after we've gotten these installed, we'll then go into uh, our defining our task. So we're just gonna have one task in this tag. So I'm gonna build it slowly for you. Um, so what we're gonna need is, I'll kind of just bring it all over this one. So here we have our transfer data task. And so what we're doing here is we'll have our Mongo connection. Um, so here calling it Mongo hook, calling our Mongo default. So I'm gonna go over to the Airflow UI in, in a bit and show you, you know, how to create these connections. And you also have your MySQL hook, again, just using your MySQL connection ID, MySQL default. Um, and so here what we're doing is fetching data from a Mongo uh, collection. So 
if you're not familiar with manga, well, you're probably not going to use this tutorial, but instead of like tables, it goes off of collections. Um, and those collections will have, you know, multiple data sets that each contain tons and tons of JSON um, of relatively unstructured data, well, structured data, but JSON format, it's all objects. Um, and so here you'll choose your connection, what database that con collection is in. Um, and then what this list function is going to do is list all the um, objects in that collection, uh, store it as data. And so this dot find uh, basically collects everything from the collection and then list we're wrapping it in here to turn it into a list to then turn it into data. And the reason we're doing that is because what we'll do with each of those collections. So in this simple example, I'm just going to, you know, imagine these are two column collections, you know, it's, it's customer and it's purchase amount. So here for each of those JSON objects that are stored in this list, this is going to insert into your table, um, columns, one and columns two, and then this is going to dynamically extract the values um, from your uh, from the document. So as you can see here, dot, or the little weird S, this is just Jinja templating to pull the two columns um, from this particular document in your data list. Um, then you're going to take that uh, query, so you've pulled out that data, you've, uh, or you've defined the query, sorry, you haven't pulled out the data yet, and then what this is going to do is, so here we're passing in the parameters, so these are being fed into Jinja templating here, so field one and field two, um, and we're running this query. So inserting into column one and column two, field one and field two. So this will take the first two fields within each of your uh, Mongo data entries and then insert them into your MySQL database of choice. Um, so pretty simple setup here. And then what we'll do is also, you know, just define it as a DAG. So here at DAG, and we're off the races. Um, so before I kick it over here for the UI, I did want to just show you a couple different ways you could alter this for your particular use case. So I want to show you just quickly if you want to do it for multiple data data tables, if you want to insert this dynamically. Um, so one second, and I'll show you a few different options. So here's another option you could go through where here you can feed it a list of tables. Um, and so this is if you have multiple tables you want to bring from Mongo, bring them in uh, your MySQL database. This has kind of two steps. So you still have the preserved uh, initial transfer data function. However, this time it's also going to iterate through that table name and use that to you know get your collection. So we're iterating through that. So instead of you hard coding it in here, you can just feed a list. Um, you can also make this a parameter for the DAG if you wanted to. So you could just you know type in, hey, I want to use these tables. Um, and then for tables and tables, you see uh, you know it'll create a task, so it'll transfer them all within parallel. So now I just want to quick show you how to do a parameterize and then I'll switch over to the Airflow UI and show you all of this working. And so finally here, another option, uh, here's how you could add the params here. So here are tables, see so I'm just hard coding it there, but what you do is edit this in the Airflow UI, say trigger DAG with params and then enter whatever tables you want to be transferring. So this is if you, know, you want that to be an ongoing DAG that you continually use to move data uh, from Mongo into your MySQL. Um, so just wanted to show you every potential uh, way you could slice and dice this to make sure that we hit your use case. Um, and so now I'll kick over the Airflow UI and we'll take a look at all of this uh, running in practice. And spoiler alert, it's stupid simple. So here in our Mongo database, and because this will really inform what my Mongo database name is, if I give it the details, I'm going to kind of just fudge these. So here we have your connection ID, so Mongo default. Uh, then your host, it's going to be something like cluster name dot account dot mongodb.net um, and then you're going to have your login with whatever your database user is so key thing is you'll have to create a database user you can't just use your existing like username login that really screwed me up for a while because i kept trying to use that and resetting my password and everything but no you have to go to database settings and create a user in there to actually be able to programmatically access um, and so you know database username here and then your password, and then make sure that you have serve equals true. I'm not sure why you need this, but you do need it within your uh, connections. And boom, now you'll have a Mongo connection here. And then we'll also create our MySQL connection. So now we can create our MySQL database. So here, select MySQL. And then here, what we'll need to do is just have MySQL default score your host, which is just going to be your uh, SQL database host. So SQL connection dot, you know, typically gets me a kind of long weird string here, at least it is for mine. And then you will have your login. So your, your database user. So I'm using the admin uh, and whatever your admin password is. Um, and this is how you'll connect to your MySQL database. Um, so pretty simple. You don't need to have extra fields if you're using a particular version or type of MySQL. 
Um, you might, but not if you're just using like the base one that you installed, um, 5.0. I know with 8.x, it can get a little tricky. So I just was lazy and did 5.0. Um, and you can also specify your schema here if you want, but you don't need to. Um, so here I will save it. Boom. And then I already took the liberty of running this DAG with some proper credentials. And you can see here, if we just go into our one running DAG, see we have a transfer data success. Um, and so what this is going to do is, it, it, as you can see, it ru will run for pretty long because this is not super optimized. Um, so if you're using lots of tables, you, you see you know, this is like 17 minutes um, because it's, it's just going row by row. Um, so if you want to do it faster, if you want to perform queries faster, you might want to consider, or if you have a really large table, you might want to consider uh, splitting that table up into multiple. Uh, And that is all I have for you today. So I hope you learned something. I hope this was helpful for you and have a good one. Data guy out.